Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome to another developer Q&A video for Eve Echoes. Now for those of you familiar with the developer Q&A video format, you can skip ahead to the timestamp shown on screen now. For the rest of you, allow me to explain a few things. So, each week, the developers of Eve Echoes, NetEase, take a series of questions posed by you, the community. They respond to those questions, and then they show those responses on the official Eve Echoes Discord, Facebook page, Twitter account, and somewhere in-game as well. Now, if this is so readily available, some of you may be asking why on earth does Benzie bother to cover this in a video? Well, simply put, because a lot of the questions are given quite short answers that on their own can be quite oblique. They don't really give you much info. Now, because I do this every single week and I've got all of the previous developer Q&As, plus all things like Discord AMAs and the roundtable videos and just conversations I've had with the developers as well, I can kind of tie that together into a more cohesive argument. I also like to give my personal thoughts and opinions on this. I've spent most of my adult life surrounded by game development and design, and I like to think that I've got a firm understanding on how EVE Echoes works alongside EVE Online, and thus can add a bit of value, I suppose, to the questions and the answers given, and talk about whether or not I think these would be good additions, bad additions, that kind of thing. Now, of course, this is just my personal opinion. These are just my personal opinions. Everyone is entitled to an opinion. If you have yours, I would love to hear what you think in the comment section down below. Do, while you're down there as well, hit like on the video. Subscribe if you haven't already for more of this kind of stuff. Now, if you have a question for the developers yourself, there is also a link in the description of this video that you can go to a Google document that will allow you to ask the developers a question. If you are featured in a future developer Q&A, you will win a month of Basic Omega. And of course, do make sure you're commenting on my YouTube videos um, and that you're active in the Catskull Discord because I give two people on my Discord and one person in the YouTube comment section every single week a month of Combo Omega. Right, with all of that said and done then, please, if you do want to help support this channel, head across to patreon.com forward slash Captain Benzie. Every pledge, every dollar really helps. Otherwise, let's jump into the developer Q&A for the week of the 20th to the 26th of November. Question number one then. When I discovered that players could own stations, I was first thrilled but soon disappointed to find out that they are somehow all the same for visitors, except for some very creative names. If players could somehow personalise them and manage them like a small storefront, I feel this could add a lot of depth to the game. I remember hoping that some would feel like a club or bar that everyone would want visiting, due to the cleverness and creativity of their owners. This could be done either by letting players customise appearance inside and or outside, or through the combo of services offered at the POS. Maybe players could get income as well, like a percentage of repair fees for repairs done at their POS, or storage, quaff sales, or something else. I love this idea. I think this is an incredible idea. Now, a long time ago, the developers did actually tease that they were going to add skins to the, uh, to, to the player-owned outposts. Um, that has never surfaced. That was literally mentioned when they first were added to the game, that yeah, we'd like to add skins, keep an eye on that coming in future. It's been a year and a half going on two years now, we still don't have that. Now, of course, POSs are still really useful. Those capsuleer outposts, obviously you can put things like your resource management centers and use them to gather extortionate amounts of PI and save you having to fly around a constellation collecting your own jet cans. They can also be used to create uh, compressed space, nihilist compressed space or nihilist dead space um, as content for you as well. And if you are a dedicated cruiser pilot, the ability to create two nihilist dead space sixes or sevens or eights a week can be a godsend. It is content that otherwise just doesn't really exist in the game for you. You can guarantee that you're going to have two of those to do a week. It's not much, but it's something, right? That said, skins for the outside and even the ability to customize the inside to look like different stations, hell yes, sign me the hell up. Look, if netties aren't going to go back and do all of the actual quality of like the proper balancing and redesign of things like exploration and industry that the game really needs, if they're intent on just selling us bigger stuff, then cosmetic stuff like this is an easy win, surely, right? Now Kylan responds, the future of the player owned station is established, sorry, the feature of the player owned station is established, it's difficult to change to a mode that supports player customization. Sorry, everything I know about game dev says otherwise on this, but... However, we have new content to be released later, which will allow construction and management. 
So I think definitely having the ability to change how things look inside or look outside the Citadel, that's not a difficult thing to do at all. Like they're saying it's difficult, it's really, really not. Like that's just a case of going back and changing how it appears and just making that a variable rather than a static and that's not a difficult thing to do. It's minorly time consuming but not in any absolutely horrific way. Um, and I think this could be a really good way to get some income from the big spenders without actually damaging the game and its design even further. That said, is it a priority? No, not really. And I think there's more you could do with this. I do think setting up shop fronts inside your Citadel would be really cool. I do think that being able to like open it up for industry and other people to come and use various different uh, modules and that that you have could be really cool. Not necessarily like a bar or a club, but being able to, you know, open it up so that other people can dock at it and reprocess. Certainly, I don't have mine set up to be able to do that. I can't reprocess materials at my own station. So having another outpost in a system owned by someone else that I can go to reprocess and they get a small fee from me for doing so, that would be awesome, wouldn't it? I think that would be absolutely incredible. Question number two then. It's great seeing Verge of Silence back, but can you please make the same modifications you did on Dormant Realms, where your ship mod setup holds when you enter each instance? Also, can you please make the instances selectable, rather than us having to enter quit, enter quit, enter quit until we get the instance that our friends or corp mates are in? Fleets are also very annoying for Verge as you can't re-enter without dropping the fleet you're just going to have to ask to get re-invited to again as soon as you're in. Can you make Verge of Silence fleets like you made for DIR fleets? These would massively improve Verge gameplay. I wholeheartedly agree with all of that. It is annoying as all hell to have to enter, drop, enter, drop, and just keep rolling the dice. It's not even guaranteed that you'll get in after a certain number of attempts. You just have to keep doing it until eventually you enter the right room. And yeah, if you enter a room and then have to get invited to a fleet and then you leave and then you come back, it's such a ball ache. Like, why did they design it this way? Clearly, the whole thing is built around fleets and working together as a King of the Hill style event. So absolutely, they should have made this simpler. This is one of those things I say that Verge of Silence, I don't dislike it wholeheartedly. I don't think it's a terrible idea. I think it's quite an interesting event. It's just full of all of these little issues that cropped up last time and people mentioned all of this last time and said, if this comes back, this is our feedback. This is what we liked. This is what we didn't like and when they've added it back to the game again they've basically copy pasted it and I'm just really perplexed by this anyway let's look at what Kylum says Verge of Silence encourages capsuleers to enter alone rather than teaming up what what no it doesn't no, it really doesn't. Verge of Silence does not encourage solo play at all. It encourages fleets. It's a king of the hill. If you've got 30 people sitting on it, what's one person coming in one at a time going to be able to do against that? What? Like, okay, I, I get difference of opinion on certain things, but you have... This is like baking... I don't know. This is like baking a cake and, you know, putting all the icing and the cherries and all of that on it and then saying, oh, it's, you know, it's designed to be looked at, not eaten. Well, why did you put all the flavor in then? Why not just make it out of, like, flour and water and nothing else? If you put flavor in it, it's designed to be eaten. This isn't some kind of difference of opinion. That's just... Look, you designed this entire thing around the fact that people need to work together in order to achieve anything. And now you're telling us that it's designed for solo play? <laughs> what? On the one hand, he says, continuing quickly, the mechanic is designed to be more individual player friendly. No, it's not. If that was your intention, if you were designing it to be single player friendly, you completely f***ed up. On the other hand, we want to see free for all in Verge of Silence. On the other hand, FFA is, you say you want it to be individual, but on the other hand, you want it to be individual. What? Oh, we don't want to see it become a boring idle game after fleet hunting. Well, that's what it is. That's what we told you it was last time and you did nothing to change it. What were you expecting? This also explains why we don't provide the feature to freely choose systems. In the future, we'll design some new gameplay to provide capsuleers with a place to team up and fight. You designed gameplay to provide capsuleers with a place to team up and fight. Then you just completely cocked it up. 
half-assed it, and now you're scrambling for a reason as to, oh no, totally, it was meant for solo play. That's why we designed it to be entirely around fleet play, but made it ridiculously awkward. You, oh my god. <laughs> oh, well, if Benzie's been ranty bad mood, Benzie, that's, that's cheered me up. That's cheered me up. The level of bullshit that's just poured off Kylem's fingers there is ridiculous. Like, look, you designed something one way and now you're surprised that people expect it to work that way. That's like saying, oh, you know, yeah, we, we designed the Apocalypse Striker to have very powerful lasers that, you know, ultimately don't have much in the way of tracking, but, you know, long range, so you don't really need the tracking. Wait, why are you people using this as a sniper in PvE rather than the Siege Warfare it was meant for? You designed it that way. You made it this way, and now you're complaining that... Like, crying out loud, look, I, I give the developers a lot of respect for a lot of things, but if Kylum is being honest here, like genuinely, if Kylum is being honest here and that the intent was to make this solo, then they completely screwed that up. Like, they, they tried to make something solo, but then accidentally designed something very much designed around, you know, around team play. I, I just... <laughs> All right. Question number three then. Oh, how are we going to top that? Due to how Drone Boat works, specifically Worm Healer, Rattlesnake, they use Missile as half their damage dealing weapon, well, more 40% really, and half using drones, unlike other ships, but the Purple Core gives 18 bonus to drone damage that applies only half your max DPS. Yeah, I've said this in previous videos, glad that someone's picking up on this. Not only that, some of the bonuses are limited to explosive or thermal extra damage, meaning that I'd be limited to using one type of drone to get the already small drone bonus. Please, it's basic math, correct the bonus to make it even to other faction battleships, and don't put specific types of bonus damage for drones like electromagnetic thermal, unlike in other ships, like Vindicator. You always do thermal and kinetic, um, no matter which one you get, you're getting more damage. In drones, you're only getting bonus damage if you're using the specific drone that match it. Now look, I'm going to come out of the gate with a controversial statement here. I don't mind the fact that it's like it's electromagnetic or thermal for the drones. I think if that's going to happen though, it kind of needs to be done in a way um, that you can get all four types so that you can specifically keep re-rolling the stat to get exactly the one you want. I don't mind that. I think that's okay because yes, it's going to prioritize, you know, people who want to use explosive drones like Berserkers or Warriors or Valkyries or whatever. They're going to try and prioritize the explosive damage, whereas if you're using the Amar drones, you're going to want electro electromagnetic, that kind of thing. I think that is a valid point, but it needs to be a significantly higher amount. If you're going to give something, say, a 10% drone damage boost, then it needs to have practically a like 20% drone damage boost if it's of a specific type, because otherwise it's just, uh, yeah, we've talked about this before, um, especially with things like rail guns. If we're talking about rail guns, they're a good example because they do electromagnetic and, sorry, they do thermal and kinetic in equal amounts, 50% of each. If you're going to give 10% rail gun damage, you're boosting the thermal by 10% uh, and you're boosting the kinetic by 10%, which means if you're going to do just a straight up, oh, it's railgun thermal damage, it needs to be 20%, otherwise the straight up DPS is just better. So that absolutely is basic math and needs to be taken into consideration. I've also said that yes, 100%, Worm Healer and Rattlesnake Nano Cores that give bo uh, bonuses to the missiles or bonuses to the drones need to give a larger bonus. If we were to incorrectly assume that the Worm Healer and Rattlesnake do 50-50 damage split, then if someone gets a 10% boost to their missiles, say on a Typhoon, then the Rattlesnake needs to get 20% boost to its missiles. Um, not exactly, the math doesn't work out exactly that way, but it needs to get basically double that to give the same DPS increase. That's true. That is 100% true. So if you're looking at something that gives drone damage um, and you put it on a Dominix, then most of its damage, the highest amount of its damage comes from those drones. Whereas something like a Rattlesnake, you need to have it be a bigger boost to that single point of DPS. If you want to take a, say, say you've got a Rattlesnake and a Typhoon, both at 2000 DPS. Um, just say, just say you've set it up to that both of them are exactly 2000 DPS. If you then put a 20% drone damage or 20% missile damage on the Rattlesnake, 
and then put a 20% missile damage on the Typhoon, then the Typhoon is going to have more overall DPS because you're boosting a bigger number, whereas on the Rattlesnake, Healer and Worm, you're only boosting part of its damage. And yes, that does need to be taken into consideration. Absolutely agree. I've mentioned this in other videos before. Yeah. Thanks for your feedback, says Kylan. We've been aware of this problem, but we're still thinking about whether there's a better solution. We're also considering giving more choices to drones and fighters. I'm not sure drones and fighters need more choices. You can already choose, using large drones as an example, you can choose between the four damage types, and then you can also choose between whether you go sentry or standard. I think small and medium drones, the fact that you can choose between just the four different damage types is fine. The problem is that we have C-type weaponry for everything except drones, and I understand that faction drones are probably the one thing keeping faction warfare alive at the moment, um, in that getting those and selling those is a big part of that, um, but faction drones don't compare to C-type weapons, which means if you look at something like a Dominix and then compare it to an equal level ship like the Typhoon, the Typhoon's going to do more DPS on the simple fact that it can have C-type, B-type, A-type and X-type weaponry, whereas the Dominix is stuck with Republic Fleet or Kaldari Navy or Galente Navy or uh, Imperial Navy, stuff like that. Um, it, it, that's kind of the issue, and it's the same when it comes to the drone damage amplifiers. Drone damage amplifiers don't have C-type variants, which means you don't get that same boost as you would on a ballistic control unit, or a gyro stabilizer, heat sink, magnetic field stabilizer, that kind of thing. So that's your main problem with drones, that you don't have the same meta levels available um, for most of its gear. Now, there are a couple of easy fixes to this. The first is, in regards to nanocores, just do it. You did it with the Nightmare Hair or whatever the hell it's called. I can never remember the name of that nanocore. When they did that hair nanocore for the Rattlesnake, that had it. That had more drone DPS on it than any of the others had weapon system damage. Like, if you looked at the Macariel one, the Lucifer Macariel, it's like 20% uh, cannon damage, whereas the drone damage on the Rattlesnake one was like 30%. It is a bigger number, so they figured this out. That's bullcrap that Kylam is saying that we're still thinking whether there's a better solution. You've got a solution. There's no need to overthink this one. Just give the healer, worm, and rattlesnake bigger numbers on those things. Most drone ships, all you need to do now is add in C-type gear for them. If you want to add C-type drones and make them even rarer than the, uh, the, the Federation Navy stuff, then do that. Add it into uh, Faction War Games or whatever. My preference here would be to give it to exploration as blueprints and then make those blueprints fairly rare. Explorers can find them, sell them for a pretty uh, price on the market. Then industrialists can build them um, into something that, and make money that way. That would be my preferred way of doing it. This isn't difficult. This really isn't difficult. Add the blueprints for C-type drones, um, put them on par with DPS of other weapon systems, or just below because of the versatility and strength that drones have, and make sure the drone damage amplifiers, etc. have C-types as well. It's really not difficult, guys. Like, they're... Yeah considering giving more choices, thinking about a better solution. You don't need to. The solutions are right there. They're really simple. Let's not overcomplicate this. Just give people what they need. Question number four, then, out of five. When will the missing models be fixed in the abandoned advanced laboratory encounter missions? I'm always getting stuck on structures that you can't see. All that is there is red wording that says missing model. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, this is a big issue. We've reported this problem to the coders, and they're still trying to find the cause. We'll have some follow-up until the problem is solved. Glad that they're acknowledging this one. I agree it's an issue. Some of the like artifacts in-game are pretty annoying anyway. I haven't seen one in a long time but there used to be a Minmatar sort of satellite dish thing in space that reminds me a lot of the, the big satellite in GoldenEye. Um, and just getting caught in that was the worst thing ever. Like, you would have to manually pilot your way out and you're stuck at ridiculous speeds because you're colliding with hitboxes that are just absolutely awful. Like, some of the worst hitboxes in gaming history. You're colliding with empty space and dropping to zero while everything is shooting at you. Yeah, no, stuff like that does need to be changed, um, I agree. Uh, yeah, that's not necessarily an easy fix. It's something you'd look at and go, well, it's just not loading, just fix that. Code can be spaghetti, and it's a bit of a tricky one sometimes finding exactly why it's not loading. At least they've acknowledged it. Getting that one sorted, yeah, agree. 
Question number five then. Hey, the Ego Traverse mode was so cool. I really love the friendly 1v1 duels you could challenge your friends to. Could you please bring back the Ego Traverse on an urgent basis as a permanent game mode? Yeah! I have no idea why they bothered to take this out. Like, let's spend time and effort making content that people love, put it in for a month, and then just take it away because reasons. You can't even say that, oh, it was like too powerful, people were getting too many rewards, because the rewards are exclusive to battleships and battle cruisers, like everything else in this game. There's no reason that the rewards shouldn't have been at lower tier as well, that you shouldn't have been able to competitively do Frigate versus Frigate, Desi versus Desi, Cruiser versus Cruiser, like you could with Battleships and uh, Capitals, uh, Battleships and Battle Cruisers, sorry. Yeah, you should also have had a Capital versus Capital mode in there as well. Um, but yeah. I have no idea why they took it out, and Kylum says we already have plans to make it permanent, but there are still some specific content to be developed, so the release time is to be determined for the time being. Oh boy, those three letters, to be determined. Yeah, the Yan Jung were to be determined two years ago, we still don't have them. DIR Reflection was due to be determined, and it still isn't back. When Netty say TBD, it basically means whenever the hell we finally get around to it, like, you know, yeah, eventually, maybe, sometime, perhaps. It's such an ephemeral non-answer that I just can never trust it when I hear it anymore. Again, we had some plans to make it permanent, but there are some, some specific things to be developed. So why would you take it out? Why you take it out? Just leave it there. If there's more you want to add, add it later. Just there's no reason to take away uh, functional working content at this point just because you want to add more to it. Just add more. Like, just... Th what? <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, it gets me sometimes. It really does get me sometimes. <sighs> just, why? Why spend time, effort, and energy? Why spend resources developing something just to only have it last for a, a small period of time? There is the argument that, you know, things like Ego Traverse takes players out of the actual PvP environment of the real game world. Um, but even then, just do what EVE Online does and make it so that non-friendly versions have actual destruction that that would work you know that that has the same effect of keeping consumption up in the game i don't know i don't know maybe i'm just crazy but i kind of think that a lot of the stuff we have in eve echoes as a problem is simply because the developers of eve echoes kind of look over the fence at eve online and they see where eve online is and how they got there Using Force Auxiliaries as an example, people have pointed out to me that, oh, it's fine that NetEase are screwing up with Force Auxiliaries and making everything capital-centric and null-sec, because that's what EVE Online did. So, because EVE Online made the mistake, it's fine that EVE Echoes made the mistake. EVE Echoes, NetEase are sitting here with the answer sheet. They have the answers to all of these problems, and they're choosing to ignore it and try things their own way and failing instead, and I just don't understand that. I just don't understand that. I don't understand why you would look over the fence and go, right, well, they did ABC and it completely screwed up, so they then had to do DEF, um, and then it was about balanced. Let's start at ABC. Why? Why would you not just go straight to F? Why would you just not go straight to the situation where things worked? Why do you feel that your game suddenly, despite the fact that you've got worse balance in Echoes than you had in EVE Online when these things happened, we've got a worse foundation, why do you think that, oh, well, they did this and it didn't work, but if we do it, maybe it will just work? Einstein defined madness as repeating the same thing, hoping for a different result, and by that, by that definition, then the staff at NetEase should be institutionalized at this point, because we're repeating the same mistakes that EVE Online made with a worse starting foundation, and then wondering why it doesn't work. Just fix it. Just go in with the situation already resolved. You've got the answers. If you've got the answers to the problems, why are you still insisting that you try it differently and work a different route through the same solution? And it's not even necessarily they're trying it differently, they're trying the same thing and then wondering why it doesn't work further down the line. Meanwhile, missiles are still terrible. Industry is absolutely in a dumpster fire that is in the middle of a train wreck at the same time. It's like a dumpster that was on the back of a train. They put the fire on the dumpster, then the train crashed. And... <sighs> Just there's so many problems going on right now that could that all have such easy solutions. Okay, not all of them have easy solutions. Industry's a bit more complex than that, but to do something about it, right? Come on, it's just do something. 
just do something. This game is bleeding players at the moment. New players are not hanging around because of all the issues going on that they face. And I'm sitting there on Reddit being told by people, oh, you know, yeah, because I suffered, um, like, leveling up, other people should too. And then those same people are posting, I'm like, why is the game dying? Just, oh, it's, it's frustrating. It's frustrating. Talking about frustrating as well, hopefully I will be back with some content. Sorry I didn't get a video out yesterday. I am working on a new implant video thanks to two incredibly kind donations. I've now got implants on Captain Benzie and on Silent Rose. Unfortunately, due to the no occupation of Void Space, when we were told this wasn't an occupation, they were just going to come in and hit some things and then sod off. Now it's turned into an uh, occupation. Well, ultimately, I'm being held ransom at the moment. No are not allowing me to get access to any of my ships or vessels at the time of me filming this, so I am struggling to make content. I do have the implant video, I'm working on it, just I can't do everything I want to in that video yet until I have access to my own assets, because yeah, why not use Fulmination Benzy? Because Fulmination is buggy and horrid at the moment. The devs have done nothing except screw it up for the past like six months. I don't have the codes for implants and things like that because the devs are refusing to give us the new codes for stuff on Fulmination. It's a mess. It's a mess of a situation, but as soon as it's resolved, as soon as I get access to the Catskull Academy again and can get my resources, my ships, and I can start actually filming content, I will have some cool in-space content to show you um, for Evecos, for implants, and other stuff like that. Otherwise, folks, let me know your thoughts and opinions on these Q&A questions. There's five of them this week, which is nice to see. Some of the answers are freaking hilarious. I do apologize for swearing. I should go back and edit that out and bleep it. But hey, if I didn't, my apologies. Please don't strike me, YouTube. Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. Otherwise, happy sailing and see you in New Eden.